Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Earlier today I tested X-Plane and what I called core scaling with X-Plane. And essentially I wanted to see how many cores X-Plane would actually use. And the easiest way to do that is just keep disabling cores until you see a performance degradation. So we did that up here and that's a, a different video. I'll probably put the link to it in the video description. But now I said, well, shoot, I need to try Microsoft Flight Sim and see, you know, if the same thing occurs or if, you know, it, it does a better job. I really didn't even know. Um, so uh, I was actually expecting it to do better. And, well, we'll find out here in a minute. So um, what I use is an i7-12700K, which is an eight core, uh, excuse me, eight performance core for efficiency core processor. Um, so the performance cores are used for the main processes and efficiency cores are used for background processes. So initially I ran um, Flight Sim 2020 on eight performance cores and four efficiency cores, in other words, all of the cores. And I got 59 frames per second. And this is a very basic test. It's just a single 1080p display running global ultra settings with a 3080 Ti and I uh, just went to LaGuardia Airport, sat on the runway, and recorded the frame rate. So the next test I did, I just disabled the efficiency core. So we have eight performance cores running, and I got 60, which is basically the same thing. You, do, you know, this is just a, could just be a run-to-run -run variance. Uh, one frame per second is nothing to even think about. So next I took us down to four performance cores and no efficiency cores, so quad core, and we got 59. Again, no change essentially, no change. So take us down to three performance cores, no efficiency cores. And the score we got or the frame rate we got was 57. Again, it's a little bit of a, more of a change, but again, it's could be just a, a variance, a run-to-run -run variance, but ver you're not going to notice this with your eye. That's the main, the main point. So the next thing I did was take us down to two performance cores and no efficiency cores, and we saw 55 frames per second, where, yes, that's a two frame per second difference, but you're not going to notice that with your eye. And so, yes, we're down to two cores, dual core processor. We haven't been on dual core processors in, I would say, over 10 years. This has been a long time. But yet, the only difference between eight core and dual core is the difference between 55 and 59. Not really anything you can notice with your eye. Lastly, took us down to one performance core, and I enabled two efficiency cores so we could handle Windows background tasks, and we saw 51 frames per second, 51. So very similar results to X-Plane. If you look at the scaling, don't compare these numbers. You know, these aren't apples to apples. What you wanna look at is the drops we see as we disable cores. And as you see, it's very, very similar to X-Plane. Not until we get down to two cores do we really see anything worth noting and really doesn't get worth noting until we get down to one performance core and two efficiency cores. So uh, at least on a single 1080p display running uh, the built-in Cessna 172 at ultra settings, um, Microsoft and X-Plane, neither one really engage more than about one core from my testing. Again, it, Single display, global ultra, uh, you know, no third party stuff running, all that good stuff. Um, we're just seeing a usage really of one core from my testing.